So here I am in beautiful, sunny Southern California. And, um, you know, everybody has their favorite thing to do wherever they go. And anytime I go to Southern California, the one place that I try to always go is my favorite air museum in the whole wide world. It's not the biggest. It's not the prettiest. In it, but it is a little bit unique in that about 90% of the planes, as you'll see, as I'll say to you again in the video, about 90% of the planes are flyable. So they still are flown on a regular basis. Plus this air museum has a little gym that no other air museum in the United States has. And that is a fully flyable A6 M5 Mitsubishi Zero. Now I know what you're thinking. There's another museum that has a flyable Zero. However, what makes this particular Zero unique is it has the original engine in it. So it is the most original Japanese Zero in the United States in flyable condition today. So I hope you enjoy this video. I think I may break this video up into two parts because there's a really special part towards the end of the video that I think maybe I will make all of its own. And um, it's pretty cool. You're gonna hear, hear um, some, uh, or you're gonna hear from, from a gentleman that's going to tell you some stuff that's just really cool about Planes of Fame and the founder of Planes of Fame and something really special about that museum. If the flyable zero is not enough for you, this is going to be even as cool, if not cooler. All right, so sit back, relax. Welcome to the hangar deck. Sit back, relax. Pretend you're in Southern California with me and enjoy a small tour, a wet your appetite tour of Plains of Fame in Chino, California at the Chino Airport. One of you model builders out there needs this. Too bad I won't be here when they start this baby up. So here I am, guys and gals, at the uh, beautiful Plains of Fame in Chino, California. This is my happy place whenever I come to SoCal. Oh my goodness, I love this place. And what's really cool, if you don't know this, what's really cool is 90% of the aircraft here at Plains of Fame are still flying. Take another look at this great P-51. Okay, this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is the most original Japanese Zero in North America. It is the only one in North America with its original engine. So this is the original uh, Japanese Zero, the A6M5 in the United States. So I'm going to give you a couple minutes with this beautiful, beautiful 
beautifully preserved and restored um, okay? zero. Yeah, I'm doing great. Good. Thank you. Just doing a little video. Good for, you. Good for you. But look at that. That is the original engine. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. And of course, it's flyable, so it leaks oil. Look at this landing gear for you model builders out there. You're going to want to look at that interior painting. Landing gear is all black. Look at that. Isn't that great? Beautiful, beautiful airplane. But anyway, I'm telling you folks, if you are anywhere near Chino, California, you owe it to yourself to come out and look at the most original the only original, all original, Japanese Zero A6M5 flying today. It'll be flying in December. It may be flying before that. But what a cool airplane. What a cool place. And look at this old BF-109 here. This bay, or yeah, this baby was pulled up out of the muck and mire, I believe in Holland. It was found, it had been shot down. If you look really close, let me see if I can zoom in here. You can see some of the damage to this airplane where it got hit by a, I believe as the story goes, a 20 millimeter round from a hurricane. And that's what brought it down. Don't know if the pilot survived or not, but it was in the muck and mire for many, many years and it was brought back and it will eventually be restored by Planes of Fame. Of course, looks like maybe the engine's out. Look at that. Let's see if I can let you see that bow damage. Look at that. Is that not cool? So, so cool. What a great place. What a great place. Future restoration. It's known to have fly on, flown in the Battle of France and the Battle of Britain. Wow, so cool. Wheels up landing on a frozen hot, uh, frozen lake. How about remained untouched until 2003. out there and here's an HE 162 specifications wow look at that look how great that is look at this guys BMW 003E1 jet engine, turbo jet engine. All of this is at Planes of Fame. Now look at this guy here. This is a HE 100D. Looks a lot like a BF 109, but it's not. Look at the landing gear difference. Landing gear was more conventional. Remember on the BF-109, the connection points were close to the center. These are more conventional. Okay, we're coming back over into the Japanese section. Some of the more esoteric Japanese aircraft. Of course, this is a Raiden. It's not really esoteric at all. Formidable fighter for the Japanese. And we come back around here. Typical pilot wear. 
Japanese aviator, Imperial Japanese naval aviator, and Army aviator. Love the color of those props. And let's see. I think if I remember right, this is a Judy. It's been a while since I've been here, so I may be foggy in that remembrance. Another shot of that Raiden. And here's the, um, I believe it was called the Baca. Suicide flying bomb basically had a rocket engine, rocket assist engine. How many of you know out there that there were more sailors killed in the Battle of Okinawa than Marines? And they were killed primarily by kamikazes. <laughs> Japanese A6M0 gun sight. Nose machine gun. Wow, it's really something. Now here's one for us model builders. Not sure what this is. Right off the top of my head. I know some of you guys know that. Put it in the comments. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. But look at that. That was a wind tunnel test bird, I'm sure. Very cool. So here's one for you guys. Now, this impresses me. You know, I, I, see, I see these aircraft in books and maybe on television. But one of the things that always impresses me is how big or how small these aircraft are when you see them up, first, up close and in person. So to give you an idea, I'll just come right up here like this. Look at that. Look how relatively small that aircraft is. Not really a big airplane at all. Very cool. And this is a de Havilland Vampire. Sorry, I should have led with that so that you knew what I was looking at. Compare it to the P-80 over here. Really a bigger airplane. Step over here, give you a size comparison. Look at all the models. That's just a few of them. So how many of you guys know what this is? It's the fuse for a bomb, right? No. It's a tiny propeller engine. No. It is a ram air turbine. So this would drop out into the slipstream and start turning this way and generating electricity. How about that? So before we leave the jet hanger. We'll take a quick look at the MiG-15. And its principal foe, the F-86. Close to the same in size. F-86 had some advantages. MiG-15 had some advantages, but the main advantage when it really came right down to it 
was the pilot. Which pilot was better? That's the guy that ran that won the day. Quiet now. At peace. And if we look over here, here's some race planes. This is that between war time, between World War I and World War II, not all of these, but some of them, where aircraft really started jumping by leaps and bounds in capability. How about that? And that's something. And then for my old buddy Max, here's the GB, or at least a mock-up anyway. But I would say a full-size mock-up. That is a tiny airplane. I bet that thing was fast in its day. Probably faster than you want to go. Kind of like the uh, air racer equivalent of a go-kart. You're doing 130 miles an hour with your butt just above the ground. How about that? So one more, guys. Here's the SBD. The famed aircraft of Midway. And um, I just wanted to point out a couple of things, uh, let you see kind of what it looks like. You know, this, this is a flyable aircraft, so it has some good weathering on it. Some weathering that you would expect to see in an aircraft that was flying. You can see some chipping. And then take a look at the paint job on this, guys. That's not masked off. So don't be afraid to uh, crank that pressure down on your airbrush and do that without masking everything off if you want to mask it off that's fine you, know, you build it the way you want to but just showing you this as an example cool beans guys cool beans <laughs>